All right, hello everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Twenty to Midnight, the Dungeons and Dragons adventure stream, where three heroes have to race against the clock if they want to save the world. My name is Gabriel Urbina. I am your dungeon master for these sessions. Uh, my name is Beth Eyre. I'm playing Helena Hailstorm, a human fighter from the Veldrin Empire, and I'm coming to you live from London, London Town. And I am Emma Sherjarko. I play Cal, a.k.a. Calistoga Vance, a tiefling sorcerer from Bas Serenath. And I am coming to you from the land of enchantment, Santa Fe, New Mexico. And hello, my name is Mike Schubert. I'm playing the role of Satus and Kirtum, who's a human bard from Kel Moltren. And we've got a two-episode streak of where in the world is Mike Schubert being New York City. Let's go. Yeah, Let's city, keep that alive. City. That might be a record. Oh <laughs> you're God! Right, you being oh. in the same place too. Who's, two, who's two to say? But it's we're approaching yeah. high score status. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I do like how you know it's like we get like all of our endorsement deals out of the way as soon as the stream starts. You know, we shout out London, London Town. We shout out San Fe, New Mexico, the land of enchantment. The land of enchantment. And we yeah. shout out our uh, very successful spin-off series. Right. Where in the world Where? is Mike Schubert? <laughs> yeah. yeah, I gotta get a big red coat and red hat for yeah. one of these episodes. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we should. We speaking of merch, we should get that that on a T-shirt. Mm. Where in the mm. world is Mike Schubert? Where in the Where world is, is Mike he? Schubert? Where yeah. is that boy? <laughs> Where is he? Where has he been? Yeah. Um, all right. I don't think that much of anything happened last session that is worth recapping. So why don't we just yeah. uh, jump on in? Uh, what do you yeah, guys want to do next? A, yeah, very run-of-the-mill episode. Just yeah, very yeah. normal <laughs> things happening. Nothing. Nothing happened. All whatsoever. right, let's just like very quickly do it. There was a dinosaur race. You guys didn't win. The guy that you had set up to rob someone ended up getting turned into an ice statue. You took a magical object and penetrated the impenetrable blizzard. Helena ended up communing with a god. Cal ended up dying and talking to someone. We don't know who yet. Mm -hmm. And finally, after Helena uh, was released from the small vision quest that she went on in order to commune with the Frostwalker, the god of destruction, and emerged wielding a powerful new sword, she was able to destroy the Rakshasa assassin that had been hounding you guys during your adventures up in the Teldorath. Um, <laughs> and just sort of doing the slightly more involved version of it, after a lot of um, soul-searching and debating while riding a T-Rex at breakneck speed around the town in a very violent race against other competitors, you eventually um, decided that you were quite all right with coming in second place um, and letting Tarok and sort of the local um, kind of Viking clan home favorite boys be the ones that won. Um... There was a moment in the race when Lurian seemed distracted, perhaps making you think that she has knowledge that something was happening back at her store while everything was going on in the race. Um, and the fact that Captain Severin was turned to ice, um, as if affected by a spell, is another indicator of that. Um, so yeah, lots of little things going on here, but you officially have what you came for. You came here searching for a Void Piercer, the powerful, blessed by the gods weapons that the Cavaliers used to wield in the old days. And now you have it. Helena has claimed the Void Piercer. Um, quick talk, though. You guys also uh, leveled up. Cal and Sadis to level 6, Helena to level 7 with her god-imbued... Um, little burst of power um any new and exciting abilities any new tricks anything new that you can do like uh what's going on it's a brave new day for these characters yeah i learned the ability to counter charm which Ooh. is as an action i can perform until the end of my next turn and during that time mm -hmm. me and any friendly creatures within 30 feet that can hear me gain advantage on saving throws against being frightened or charmed so i yeah. guess if we have a very specific enemy that's doing lots of uh saving throw related things i will just burst out into prose and then we will all have advantage i also now have the ability once per long rest to use universal speech where i can as an action choose five creatures and they can magically understand me for an hour regardless wow. of language <gasps> and stuff whoa which that's is pretty cool. cool for like a social thing 
And then I did gain one more spell, so I added a level three spell slot called Dispel Magic, where basically, yeah. basically, if if a bad guy's doing an evil magic thing to us, I can go no, and then it uh, <laughs> stops. So pretty cool stuff. I don't know why I'm being like, yeah, this is all terrible for me. Like these are <laughs> yeah. all like really powerful things that like right. will let you just like smash through a couple of puzzles that I wanted yeah, to put in your I, way. I like that yeah. the skills that I have attained are like, if Gabrielle tries some shit, you'll be okay. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> You're a bard. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you can just like no sell Gabrielle shit. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> cool, cool, cool. I hate it. Cool, cool, cool. <laughs> very good, very good, very good. Um, so I, let's see what happened here. So um, as it was revealed that, uh, in last episode that I am in fact a divine soul sorcerer, not a wild magic sorcerer as I was pretending to be. Um, sneaky I, cow, bad sneaky, cow. Sneaky, sneaky cow. Um, I get something, and this is going to be notable for, for both of you, but especially for you, Satus. Um, I get empowered healing at six Ooh. level. Starting at six level, the divine energy coursing through me cannot can empower healing spells. Whenever you or an ally within five feet of you rolls dice to determine the number of hit points a spell restores, you can spend one sorcery point, that's me, uh, to re-roll any number of those dice once, provided you aren't incapacitated. Ooh, so we can cool. kind of boost up our healing. And then along those lines, because I am a divine soul, I can get some cleric spells. So I took on uh, cure wounds as well for no reason whatsoever. Uh, you know, nothing, nothing that happened last episode. Yeah, what what Lewis. racist activity could yeah, yeah. Have possibly, possibly made you want to um, yeah. get more I, healing on the team? I, I don't know. I don't know. But uh, so that's I. I think that's all. I think that's all I did. Oh, that's fun. Yeah. Some, some, some more safe. healing. Yeah. Good. Very yeah. good. Yeah. And Beth, what about Helena? How's she doing? Well, I'm just kind of stronger and, and bigger. I can certainly um, uh, Just attack. like got like some more reps in. Yeah, basically. More hench yeah. than ever. I can attack twice per action for sure. I can actually jump five feet further than I thought I could. I'm not sure if that was always there, actually, but I've only just realized it might it. Got, You might have gotten jumpier. Yeah. I got jumpier. Um, oh. My... My HP is now a terrifying 67. Um, Holy. That's bullshit. I know, right? <laughs> like, bullshit. It's Let's ridiculous. Go. So I, I think I should it. like just stand between you and everyone else and never let anything like last time ever. You are happen, almost ever Yeah, again. you are almost twice as as hardy as I am. <laughs> <laughs> great. I'm going to yeah, take all great. the shots. <laughs> um and I do also have a cool new sword and armor. Um which is very exciting indeed. Yeah, you want to um, tell folks um, what that stuff does? And like, um, I think the armor is not so exciting. The armor just gives you a little bit of AC, and then because it is imbued with frost powers, it um, gives you resistance to yeah. ice damage. So it seems um, to be called the Frost Mantle, and it does seem to give me some cold defense, which is great, and has put my armor class up from 12 to 15, which is really fun. Um, and then my sword is called Icebreaker. How cool yes. is that? Mm. Uh, and it's a plus nine. And then it's 2d6 plus six. So that's pretty cool. That's pretty um, nice. Plus it's called the Icebreaker. I mean, yeah, it's good. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Extra bonus for rad name. It's got, a, it's got a little bit more. If you click onto it and see the item description, you'll see okay. that it's got a little bit more going on there. Oh, cool, cool, cool. So this is brand new to me. Okay, great. So... Gain a plus two bonus to attack and damage rolls made with this magic weapon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, when you hit and attack using the magic sword, the target takes an extra 1d6 cold damage. That's pretty cool. When you attack a creature that has at least one head, fair, because, you know, um, with this weapon... World of Dungeons and Dragons, some things just <laughs> yeah, don't have yeah, heads. Yeah, <laughs> and roll a critical hit on the attack, roll an additional d20. Whoa! Cool. If you roll another critical hit, you cut off one of the creature's heads. Huh. Really? I enjoy that. Chops off heads. Love it. Ooh. So just everyone remind us that uh, when Helena rolls a critical, we need to 
roll another dice to either confirm the super crypt or deny the super crypt. Got it. Awesome. Got it. Good to know. Wow. Wow, that's awesome. Love <laughs> that. Yay. Um, but all right. But I think that like with that, let's jump back into the action. You guys are oh, still me. sort of in this like spire in the middle of this raging maelstrom of a blizzard. Um, the beheaded body of the Rakshasa assassin is standing off to the side. Um, you are victorious, although you are definitely all fairly beaten, fairly bruised, and oh god, just so tired. Just so god darn tired. So tired. Oh, but we can sleep now. Oh, we can but sleep presumably. now. Right? I would hope. Uh -huh. Just to be safe, Satos runs over, kicks the head farther away. Just <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's yeah. right. Just kick yeah. it down a chasm, ideally. Just get that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It like it, it rolls, and there's like a little bit of the spire that is crumbled because it's an ancient building. So there's like a little bit of an opening, and the head rolls out of the opening. Perfect. And just kind of like plummets downwards, like a good, good like seventy feet towards the ground. Please, please. And I think as it as it plummets, I'm gonna throw a firebolt at it. Uh, <laughs> That that just fair. like light it on fire. Yeah. Great. Roll me an attack. Roll. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Does that count as a spell slot? Don't do this. No, 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 no. It's, it's, a, a it's a cantrip. Uh, fire, so that's a cantrip? Yeah. yeah. It's a, little, it's a right. bit of an yeah. OP cantrip. It's an OP yeah. cantrip, that's yeah. Awesome. Um, so that's a 13 plus 7 for a non natural 20. Whoa. Um, <laughs> head is not coming back. Head I'm, not I'm coming. horrified that this is what you're spending a good roll on, but yeah, yeah sure. I know, you know, I know. As like the head, like, okay. you know, falls. But it only, does, and, it only does five damage. <laughs> as the head, like, falls downwards. You would like, you know, lean out of the spire and just cast, you know, the firebolt. <laughs> um, and it just impacts the head and you see it burst into fire and only get put off with as it like lands in the snowy ground beneath you. Santa's and Cal fist bump. <laughs> yeah. And and by the way, Helena, thanks for actually killing him. Yeah, um, you did the hard thing. Yeah, yeah. You don't need to thank me all. I had a massive freak out and let you both die. So, you know, we, we all survived. Details, water under you the You didn't bridge. let us die. We um, died of our own failing. So. Right. Don't remove our agency from our own death. Yeah. <laughs> Fair enough. As you are all laughing, Sadus, oh, no. you feel a um, <laughs> piercing cold uh, hmm. in hmm. your pocket. Mm. That fades away after a moment. Uh, I check to make sure that nothing has joined or left my pocket. Everything is still there, although as you sort of like look and go through your possessions, you catch a glimpse of the Void Keeper. Um, basically almost as if uh, it had been like glowing mm. very bright a moment ago, and now the glow is almost completely gone. Um, but it looked like it was sort of glowing pretty boldly a moment ago. Satis would relay this to the team. Uh, look, the Void Keeper might be acting up a little bit. Uh, Ooh, joy. It, I, I don't know what bright glow means, but anything this thing does, I feel bad about. So that's yeah, it's a all, new development. It's all a little disconcerting, huh? Mm -hmm. Do mm -hmm. we know what number the Void Keeper says these days? That's a great so, question. So this is, this is a thing, um, you know, and like... You've sort of had it grow cold every time at midnight as the day ticks down. Um, and even though you guys have not been sleeping, Sadas, you've been kind of keeping track of it. Mm -hmm. um, and when it ticked down yesterday, it would have been, I think, in the high 161. Um, okay. Or like the high 160s, excuse me. I don't know why I said like 161. Mm -hmm. Like somewhere in like the high 160s. Um, when you look at it now, it reads 129. Ah. <laughs> Hang on, what? Ooh. What? Hmm. Well, what? looks like uh, something has changed to reduce things. But if it's the price of destroying the rakshasa and we get to go to bed, I'll take it. <laughs> <laughs> Look, if someone came up to us and they're like, you can sleep, but it'll cost 40 days of your deadline, I'd be like, Whoa. deal. Where do I sign? <laughs> it's good to find the positive for sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I but... hope it, it, wasn't, it wasn't the deal I made so that I could come back to life? Again, I'll take that over a dead <laughs> Okay, thank you. Yes, thank so you. will I, for sure. Mm -hmm. Appreciate that. Appreciate you guys. Yeah, yeah, of course. Okay. Um, 40 days, you know, this month. 40 <laughs> days. 
We could have been wandering in the desert or something. It's... I guess mm-hmm. we should. Should we check out the Rakshasa's body? I hope well, sure. What's, what's left of it? That's yeah. a good. Why not? That's a good idea. <laughs> Uh, I want to see if he's got anything useful. Cool. Mm-hmm. Um, I never know what to make you roll for, like rifling through a dead body check. Um, <laughs> let's just call they it. Do an come invest- up often. Let's, let's just call it investigation. Yeah, we're investigating his belongings. Yeah. Uh, I got a thirteen plus three for a sixteen. I got an okay. eleven plus nothing for an eleven. Okay. I got a three plus two for a five. Cool. Um. So you've got you find a couple of things. Um, the first thing, and like think like Cal and Helena, you would um, especially be sort of like looking out for this. Is you find the gloves that the magical gloves that kind of when he took them off, that was taking off his Inspector Drago disguise. Um, so you find sort of like that set of magical gloves, um, and if you try to put them on nothing happens you don't sort of like immediately look like inspector drago um but you don't even need to roll for this cal you sort of know enough to know that um this is an arcane object and there's probably just like a command word that you're missing um this is something that maybe an appraiser or a specialist would be able to help you but these are likely an object of disguise um okay yeah well these Uh, could come in handy Oh, Get it? So. Yay. Mm, 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 mm. <laughs> um, you find uh, um, kind of a couple of just like survivalist supply sort of things. Um, some herbs that you Satis have like enough like base knowledge of survivalism to kind of be like, yeah, that's like basically kind of like remedies and antidotes and those kinds of things. Um, some dried meat, some other supplies. Um. You do find a pouch containing 30 silver um, mm. and 30 gold, excuse me, mm. um, which is very good because that brings your party wallet up to uh, 42 gold because Yay. you are nice. Yay. broke. Yay. Um, and um, yeah, with that investigation check, you sort of find a pouch that is sewn into the inside of the jacket that the Rakshasa was wearing. Um, that kind of has, like, a little bit of a trick, um, to opening it, um, but if you, once you sort of, like, rifle with it for a while, you're able to get to open it, and inside are three letters, um, what languages do y'all read? I can read common, deep speech, and elvish. Okay. Uh, common and dwarvish. Common, elvish, and infernal. (laughs) Uh, this is not a language that is known to any of you and that they are written in. Not even that one that sometimes I understand that I don't know what it is? Nope. Okay. Sorry. Mm. Huh. <laughs> Mysterious. Well, let's keep them. Yes. Yeah, definitely. What could possibly go wrong? A lot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was... It was... I knew that was the answer to the question, but I'm feeling great about stuff right now. You? I've got a whole new, uh, what's the word? Life. Life. <laughs> <laughs> it's a whole new life. Not over it. Yeah. yeah. Everything's yeah. coming up, Cal. <laughs> Wait, we've got to make this one count, though. Yeah. Yep. Everything is precious. Yeah. Okay. So, shall we? Well, good question Mm -hmm. that I just asked in my head. I saw you do that, yeah, but. (laughs) (laughs) What what was the question? What do we do next? Right. Because generally we have a choice about where to head next, notwithstanding sleep, dragons, scar, severin, apart from all that. Right, yeah. Yeah. We have, a, we have a choice. And then there's all that too. Right. There's there's what to do immediately and then what to do after that. Yeah. yeah. Those are the two questions. And the, after that is like Basaranath or Amar, right? I think so, yes. yeah. Okay. 
that is where um, the two Eladrin siblings that you have um, been given leads to, aside from uh, Demetria here in the Teldorath, are uh, rumored right. to be located. Right. And one is associated um, with the Maven, which is the god of history and knowledge and kind of like records and storytelling and one is associated with the night star the goddess of um well obviously night but also kind of creativity and self-expression and kind of um the sort of like process of invention and creating things I wouldn't be opposed to doing history just because maybe we can learn more about what's going on and that might be good context just for our endeavors. And that's the one in Basaranath, right? Correct. It's warm there and I'm very cold. I'm okay because of my ring, but I understand. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Personally, I am fine, but yeah, yeah. I, <laughs> but, yeah. I'm glad, and I'm glad you're fine, Satus. I really am. But uh, I'm, I've am i been feeling rather chilly. Let's get out of here then. Uh, do, oh, we might the... want to sleep first. Correct. And also, is there anything we can do for Captain Severin? I know he is. That's a good question. An icicle. I mean, we could go back to me. We could try risking that i think going back into town sounds scary especially because we don't know exactly where uh yeah. our, so our newfound enemy might be and i don't hate the idea of getting out of, out of town what are we gonna do with scar are we taking him with us are we letting him free it's mm. a good question i feel like ha map wise how do we get map to boss it's a good point, it's a good point. <laughs> I that's a know. great that's a great question uh okay so basically um you are in the north east corner of the continent um there is sort of you know like a coastline that sort of goes down and at the southeast corner of the continent is Basaranath, and specifically the capital city of Seldoran, which is where um Apollo, one of the two Eladrin, is rumored to be. Um, while Narl's Route is the main area in this, excuse me, the main settlement in this part of the Teldorath, you do know that if you um, go towards the south, there are a couple of like little, basically like shipping points um, along the southern coast of the Teldorath, where you could probably get a you could probably charter at the very least like passage on a trading ship going to Soliana, which is kind of the big maritime sailing empire that is on an island off the eastern coast of the continent. And from Soliana, you can probably charter a proper fast ship passage to um, either Seldoran or to Amar, which is you would kind of need to sail around the um, southern part of the continent and get to Amar, which is basically on the southwestern side of it. Um, but Soliana is a major hub for travel and trade. You might be able to not just get a ship, but you might be able to get something, um, for example, like the Zeppelin that Captain Severin was, um, you know, uh, flying when you first met him. Like, you might be able to kind of get, like, not just a fast ship, but a fast ship that might be able to take you to Amar just as quickly as they might be able to take you to Seldoran. Okay. Okay. Um, but, yeah, like, if you totally want to just kind of, like, wash your hands and be done with Gnarl's route, um, you could just kind of cut towards the south until you hit the coast and then look for a shipping lane somewhere. I don't yeah. feel right not taking care of Captain Severin. Okay. Agreed. Now, there's a couple ways we could potentially leave him in good hands without going back to Gnarl's route. So you're talking of doing the equivalent of like, you know, 
driving up to the emergency room, opening the door of your car, pushing, like, the sick <laughs> person out, and then slamming the door shut and, like, driving away. Well, I was going to suggest a little better than that. Okay, okay, good, good, good. Which, uh, which is to, because I could use sending, and I could send a message to maybe Grima and Ikali, or Father oh, Father K, yeah. Father Cargoth. I mean, he already he's taking good care of Captain Severin, but he might. That's what he does. <laughs> he might. <laughs> um, or possibly uh, Tarok. We did just do a good thing for Tarok, and he is the most powerful guy here. And we just, you know set him up for success. It is debatable whether he's the most powerful person around. Yeah, okay, besides Lurian, who might be Demetria, who might hate us a lot. I like the idea of sending to Father K. Father K? He's got experience with trying to bring this guy back to life, so I think we could send a message. Uh, Would we send him a message of, like, where to get him? Where to meet us and because we're still in the maelstrom, right? Yes. Mm-hmm. And there's kind of so. like a pocket of calm air around the spire that you're in. Um, so Scar is totally fine downstairs Great. without Great. the talisman that you guys use to kind of go through the maelstrom. Um, but you would, if you want to meet with someone, it would be advisable for you to kind of leave the area of the right. primordial ancient god-powered blizzard that destroys anything it touches. Mm-hmm. Right. So we could, like, think of a point to tell him to meet us? Yeah, mm-hmm. and, like, uh, and... as as DM, the characters would know plenty of, like, landmarks okay. that you as players don't necessarily know. So, you know, like, if you want to just sort of be, like, you know, you could meet us by, like, you know, the Red River Creek or whatever. That is mm-hmm. something that, like, you know... That's be. very easy to plug in as kind of like a place that is about an hour's out of Gnarl's route that you easily know how to get to and that as a local he would be familiar with. We don't need to yeah. spend too much time brainstorming something here. Yeah, then I think let's okay. do that. Let's drop off uh, our icicle boy and then <laughs> get out of town after saying some final words to Father Cargo. Cool. Okay. All right. So, um... I will cast sending, which has to be 25 words or less. So, <laughs> hey, Father K, it's the Cavaliers. We've got Captain Severin. He's very, very cold. Could you meet us at Red River? What was it? Creek. 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 Soon, please, thanks. Um, so this is a good question. (laughs) What going on? <laughs> yeah, right, that's what I thought. Um, you gotta reply very, very fast as okay. this like spectral image that only you can see, like a Father Cargoth appears before you, Cal. Um, and basically it goes Kalistoga, it is great to hear from you. The ale at this celebration is so good. When can we have a drink? Three more rounds, three more rounds. Anyway, as I was saying, as I was saying, the best part of it cuts off. No. Oh dear. <laughs> well, add, well. Uh, add or subtract a couple of like words in sure, there to make it exactly sure. twenty-five. Sure. Uh, perhaps sure. with some like drunken noises that the spell would consider a word. Well. Well. Is, is he coming? <laughs> <laughs> Your guess is as good as mine. <laughs> I don't think he is. <laughs> um, 
good. Um, good. Okay. Great. Ooh, just remembered one thing. Mm -hmm. The one benefit to taking care of Captain Severin and not just leaving him here. Get our sending stone back. Our, uh, no, our uh, cape of the mount bank. Get both of them back. <laughs> Does he have a sending stone? I thought we Didn't... sold we sold that to the beast master. Oh, I thought we I gave think... one to him. Yeah, that no, I think that you, I think yeah, you you sold the sending stones. You gave the cape of the mountain back to. Um, got it, got it. Yeah. To, um, Captain Severin. Yeah. So we could try to sneak in. Mm-hmm. And wait. Do I? Sneak into town? Yeah. Here's a thought. Okay. We probably can't bring our giant dinosaur friend along the boats in different transport. Can we write some sort of note and put it on Captain Severin <laughs> and strap Please him to Scar and, and, this ice and then basically tell Scar to go to Tarak or Father Kargoff or sure. someone. I like... We have Ooh. two things we can't use, so why don't we put the stationary one on the mobile one, and then... Yeah, that's a really great idea. I think maybe let's not send Scar to Tarok, but maybe to Father K. But that would make sense, yeah. And yeah. If, if Scar... I, I, I just or want to point out, you guys may Father be... Father um, You guys may be giving Scar more Lassie-like cap capacities mm. than he has. Like, I yeah. think that it may be more of a, like send him going forward in one direction and what happens from that point happens. But your point is well taken of like, you can address the letter to yeah. like, to whoever finds this, please deliver to Father Cargoth in Gnarl's route or whatever. Or um, to Maeve. At yes. The, maybe to Maeve. Though Could she'll be. keep, she'll keep that cape. Yeah, I don't. I, she maybe can unfreeze him, which. Yeah. yeah. Also, yeah. Xatis can talk to animals, right? Now, so, right? Oh, I could. Yeah. That's that true. changes things. That puts a more yeah. lassie like maneuver on the <laughs> yeah. table. Yeah. Hey, I, hey, I can utilize. That's different. <laughs> Let's yeah. do it. I use my Give brand up. new ability. Yeah. Uh, so I can. Yeah. Okay. So if I can talk to Scar directly, do I? <laughs> May, is May Maeve might be the best person then, and we and she we can might at be. least at least currently because. Farther Karkoff appears to be Kargoff. drunk. Yeah. Okay. I, yeah, I feel like Maeve at the least would be like, oh, and just keep him safe until he either figures it out or... Or contacts Father K. Yeah. Cloak? Yeah. What cloak? There was no... Oh, yeah. If we, have to, <laughs> if we have to pay to get it back, is the cloak frozen on him anyway? Yeah. Yeah, it is. So, okay, so then if that's the price yeah. to get it, then fine. Okay, cool. Yeah. Yes, I would like to utilize my one usage of universal speech. And I get to talk to Scar yeah. now. All right, so one second, okay. one second, yeah, one second. Yeah, you gotta second. Scar <laughs> okay. voice. Okay. Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> We're gonna hold on to our horses for just a minute here. First of all, read me the okay. situation with this universal translator. Universal Also, like, you guys are still, like, up in the spire and, like, away from Scars. But, like, let's hear the yeah. description yes. first. It just so I can says, see how much bullshit it is. It says, <laughs> as... as well, I didn't choose this, so blame... Steven Dungeons and Rebecca Dragons. No, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm, <laughs> I'm gonna hold Jeremy Crawford, lead designer of Dungeons and Dragons, specifically responsible for what is about to happen to me. No, 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 no. We all know it's Steven Dungeons and Rebecca <laughs> Dragons. Um, it says universal speech. As yeah. an action, choose five creatures within 60 feet. The chosen creature, and in parentheses S, so I guess up to five. The chosen creatures can magically understand you, regardless of the language you speak, for one hour. Once you use this feature, you cannot do so again until you finish a long rest or expend a spell slot. Mm -hmm. That is all? That is all it says. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The creatures can okay. magically understand you, regardless of the language you speak. Okay, so, so I'm gonna, uh, so unfortunately I'm gonna be a, 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 what might be considered a bastard DM here, <laughs> and just sort of say that this Never. will overcome the lack of a common language between you and Scar, but it will not do the thing that other 
spells that are specifically focused on speaking to animals do, which is help you overcome the fact that Scar has a two intelligence score. Mm. Um, so, like, you may be able to get across to him more clearly, but once again, don't expect miracles from his ability to, like, retain much of what you say to him. I think that that is just kind of, like, the... The, the, the level setting that I want to do before we before we get going on this plan. Cool. Is there like a major landmark that Maves is near that I could tell him? It's to off the go center towards? of town. Yeah. Okay. I also kind of feel like Mave knew we Mave saw us run out of town on the dinosaur. Um. Right? Because then we come in, and the pick up our dragons, you can, you and then could, like, leave. Uh, you'd maybe told her, like, uh, C is a strong word because of her whole sure. physical situation. But mm. you, she heard what you guys were up to. Sure. But I, my main question is, like, if there's a dinosaur running around town with something strange strapped to the back of it, Maeve might have the intuition to be like, hmm. Uh, yeah, but it might take someone, like, knocking on her door. And right. being like, hey, right. here's what's she going doesn't, on. She doesn't have windows, per se. Yeah. So mm. maybe Grimer and Ikali. Yeah, maybe we... I think I think yeah. it might make more sense to send him to the the Fang way or oh, where... Yeah. and Because he knows that. And maybe leave a note on him for Grima and Ikali. I like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. bring... To bring Captain Severin to Maeve. Perfect. Yeah. So I like end up with we Lurian. got there. Hopefully, we got yeah. there. Yeah, yeah, because they also know like Lurian is mad at us, so and him presumably, because presumably, yeah, because we don't exactly we don't want her to find him before anybody no, else. Ideally not. Okay, All right. I like so it. Is this a plan? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Oh no, he's getting a book. Oh no. I'm just gonna look at never. something. Oh, like a little geez. bit looking ahead. But no. Um, okay. Cool. Is Scar gonna talk back? I'm excited. <laughs> it doesn't say that the animal speaks back, so that would okay, be up fine. to Gabrielle. <laughs> All right, have we then arrived that this is the plan? Yes. Yeah. So I, I think we. Do we have stuff to write an, uh, a note upon? Yeah, I think that you okay. and guys We've have got like some a little parchment. bit of paper. Yeah. So I, I would say. While Cal and Helena craft the letter, I'll go up to Scar and basically be like, Scar, So buddy. one second, one second, one second. <laughs> you guys are all uh, going okay, down from yeah, the maybe we should. Yeah, maybe we should wait till we're like close. Oh, yeah, yeah, right, the, right. We have to, we're not yeah. there. Well, I forgot, we're not yeah. at Scar yet. Yeah, let's yeah, get yeah. it. Cool. Uh, roll me uh, just a d20, everyone, as you leave the spire. Uh, it's got an 11. Okay. Uh, nine. Okay. Seven. Great. So you are, you leave, you see Scar kind of waiting for you. Uh, and you're almost at him when you first hear the voice of the figure that was leaning against the side of the spire. And she goes, so how did it all go? And you turn around to see Lurian staring at the three of you. <laughs> And she will walk up to you, Helen, and go, It's been a long time since I've seen those. I guess you pleased him. Why, I don't know. You seemed extremely hesitant to ever embrace his doctrines with everything that you did in town. But I suppose that he knows best. Thank you. <laughs> I suppose that you'll be going on your way now. I'll be having the amulets back, please. Well, that's fine, yeah. Who yeah, has it? <laughs> we don't. We don't need it anymore, right? I don't think so. Well, uh, how, can we give it back to you once we get out of the maelstrom? She'll snap her fingers, and the storm around will not disappear, but it will quiet a little bit to the point that it doesn't look quite as imperious and quite as deadly. And you think that you could probably go through it, all right. And she'll go, you'll be fine. I'll be taking that back now, please. Okay. That's fine. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think, you know, you could have just lent it to us to begin with. That's all we wanted. That's not the way. 
If you want something, and you're a follower of the Frostwalker, you assert your dominance. You destroy the things that are in your way. Because destroying old things is the only way that new things can arise. For example, I've spent a very, very, very long time trying to break the chain of command that has kept this miserable little village a uh, backwards-facing bit of pond water. And now, thanks to the three of you, it's going to be that much harder to bring this area into the modern world. So, I'm well, going to give you just a little bit more of a push, but I think that you'll forgive me if I don't give you the agreed-upon gold that we talked about when we first met. Yeah, I mean, that, I, that makes I sense. I would say that's fair. I, we didn't yeah. win, so yeah. Yeah, yeah. She'll reach into her pocket and toss you, Sadis, a bag of gold. And you'll find a hundred gold in there. And she All will right. go, I have a shipping container that I'm sending down river on its way up to Mist Shore tomorrow. If you folks wanted to be on that ship, we could arrange it. And from there, you should be able to find passage to wherever you're going next. The condition is that you leave, you leave quickly, and you leave for good. I don't need you meddling in my affairs any further. Okay. I mean, that just sounds a, amenable. It it does, but just a quick question. Yes. This this man right here, and I'll gesture to the statue of ice statue mm -hmm. uh, of Captain Severin. He was just helping us. He's he's pretty innocent in all of this. Could you turn him back? I could release him from this prison if you want to, yes? And by release him from this prison, you mean give him flesh again instead of ice? Oh, I have no idea how to do that. I can simply end the miserable state that he is in by doing the thing that my god values most, clearing away the detritus. So you mean killing him? At this point... He's more of an object, so I could shatter him. We're good. Thank you. Thank you. No, yeah, thank we'll pass. You. Yeah, no, thank you. Um, okay, well, um, it was worth asking, I guess. But just, I guess out, just out of curiosity, who opened their big, dumb mouth? Was it Apollo? Was it Aurelia? Who sent you up here to bother me? Oh. Oh, you don't know. Ah. <laughs> I have to assume it's one of my idiot siblings. Otherwise, I don't know how else you would have known where to be looking for the void piercers. Um I think we'll just uh you know, our our god most uh desires not telling information to people. So, I think we're going to follow suit as well and just kind of keep keep the lips zipped. She gives you a little bit of a crooked smile and goes, that may be the smartest thing that you've said to me the entire time that you've been here. Well, don't make end me, it on a high make, note. Don't make, don't make me start liking you now. I've been quite happy to be angry at you for most of the day. <laughs> and Demetria, may yes. I call you Demetria? Uh, I would just say, I, I believe that you think you're doing a good thing here by bringing the t this town into the modern age, but it might not be up to you. Maybe listen to the people here and what they want. Anyway, uh, that's my two cents. You could have like an election or something. It's not a matter of what's right or what's good. Those are terms that me and the God that I serve don't mess around with. It's about what's necessary. The same family has controlled everything in this town for over three millennia now. That is a long time. A election, as you so naively put it, is something that would be hampered by the fact that this land has been staggered by the control that these people have over the psychic real estate here. It was a, it's a chain that has been kept artificially going. It is something that has been given longer life than it is due. And if there's something that the Frostwalker put its servants on the earth to do, it is to end things that have overstayed their welcome in the natural order. And look, if 
Tarok lost the place of power that he inherited from his father, and his father inherited from his father, and his father inherited from his father. And then, because he was the right man to lead the town, he once again became the leader of the town. That would be a new beginning. That would be the right new thing asserting its right to be the new dominant thing. As is, he continues to squat on a position that he did not earn. But well, he is quite some... charming, isn't he? He's nice to look at, and he says the, ni- the right thing, and he helps people out in a jam. And that is worth keeping him in power, isn't it? I resent the fact that you think that I'm shallow. And I also think that you're glossing over helping out people in a jam as opposed to rallying the entire town, even when newcomers are in harm's way. I think he is a selfless person who understands more than his demeanor may let on. And I think that you might be shortchanging him just a bit. She shrugs and turns to you, Helena. What about you, champion of the Frostwalker? You wield some of the most powerful objects of destruction in the world. That means that you've seen at least a little bit of the god's path. What do you make of the whole situation? I don't know. It's been fascinating. I think um, our time in Teldrath has weirdly been interesting. We've met a lot of wonderful people. I don't know what will resolve the situation just because I have this armor. Um, he seems like a jerk, but he helped us out enormously. I think you're doing some good and some bad. All right. Very fair. Well, Not what you want. wherever you're going next and whatever god you're getting mixed up with next, take some time to learn about their ways. You might have found a Shorter path to your objective here, if you had um, sat through a couple of Father Cargot's sermons. He was telling you, trying to tell you folks quite a bit of stuff that you needed to know. You think we should have robbed you in the first place? I would have respected you greatly if you had. I would have respected (laughs) you greatly if you tried to kill me. If you had succeeded in doing that, then I would have had absolutely no complaints. Well, yeah, you would have been dead. Yeah, yeah. (laughs) We could kill you now. If you, I don't. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we. You say we that. Kill and anyone. I don't have no interest in killing you. And the air around you grows a little bit colder. And once again, yeah. you sort of get this feeling of a mask slips a little bit from this being, and her hair suddenly seems to glisten blue. Her skin becomes this diamond white, and there's kind of this like aura of sapphire around her. And a moment later. It's all kind of like recedes. And she again kind of shrugs a little bit and goes, You might be able to kill me right now. It's a formidable tool that you have at your disposal. But I am not informidable myself. I'm not sure who would come out on top. So unless you were really curious, that is perhaps a matter for another time. I think Helena put it very well when she said, You've done some good and you've done some bad but not enough to make us want to kill you. And there are people that we want to kill. So it's been very nice to meet you, kind of. Yes, it's been fascinating. (laughs) Charmed, wherever you're going, please make as much of a mess of my brother's and sister's plans as you did mine. (laughs) We'll do our best. (laughs) Have a wonderful rest of your time here. Let's get out of here. Thank you. Well, now that she knows where we are, we could try to, like, get a room for the night and sleep. Yeah, our main concern of not going to town seems... She's weirdly chill with it all. Yeah. Uh, I uh, I guess we can... It could be a trap. We will probably have to pay for the room ourselves. Understandable, but I guess yeah. <laughs> she she's the ultimate you-gotta-respect-the-game type of person. So yeah. I, uh... Maybe we can just ride back into town and talk to people as opposed to sending a carrier dinosaur and baboosing. <laughs> Which, that would have been fun. We I'd... could we could still try it. <laughs> <laughs> it would be interesting. Yeah. But I feel like maybe just heading back into town a top scar is uh, more normal. It is more normal. Alrighty. 
Well, Lurian kind of um, walks next to Scar as the three of you um, make it as make your way away from the spire. Um, and indeed, like you know, as you sort of step into the storm, it is bitingly cold, but it is not sort of the flesh tearing blizzard that it was before she kind of snapped her fingers and made it calm down a little bit. Um, as you leave the area of the maelstrom though like the moment that you step out of it she snaps her fingers again and it intensifies once again into like the raging icy hellscape that you always saw it as um and as you make your way back to town uh you sort of see that there's kind of like a big party and a big celebration sort of like a big festival going on in what looks like the area right outside the fangway uh, probably still kind of the celebration going on from the end of the Amon Keth. Um, Lorian will kind of gesture at it and go, if you want to enjoy some of your spoils, I'm sure that people would be very happy to buy a drink for the runners-up in the race. Otherwise, you'll find accommodations in the town. My Emporium opens at 8 a.m. tomorrow. Shipping, um, the, sh the shipping, what am I saying? The, um... The cargo ship that I'm sending down It's been down a long river, day for everybody. The cargo container that I'm shipping down river leaves at 10 a.m. Make yourself present at the Emporium before then, and we'll see you on your way. Oh, thank you. Also, did we give you back your compass yet? You did. Thank you very much. Oh, good. Yes. Sorry. I haven't slept in seven days or something like that. <laughs> Have a pleasant <laughs> evening. Goodbye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Goodbye. So should we try to bring Captain Severin to Maeve? Yeah, yeah, that sounds like a good plan. Okay. All right. So let's go. Let's go to the mm -hmm. the eye of the storm. Cut to the eye of the storm as the door opens. And Maeve will look up from some tinkering that she seems to be doing with what looks like an alchemy kit. And she'll go, ah, you made it back. Great okay, to I'm see the three of you. <laughs> Why are you hauling that thing into my... I, I just finished cleaning well, this the guy... floor. I don't need... Maeve, <laughs> why, why, why are we... Maeve, Maeve. <laughs> what is happening? Why, why are you bringing this drippy statue into my... No, it's not actually drippy, is it? Um, hmm. Okay, point is, why? 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 Well, we thought you might be able to help and or that you might be interested um, because this is magic and you're very magical. Uh, okay. Are you interested? <laughs> <laughs> Was this a person? Yes. Yes. This is our friend, Captain Severin. What he... happened to him? Well, that's an interesting point. Um, <laughs> Not 100% sure, but no. pretty sure that uh, Demetria turned him into ice mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and we asked her pretty nicely to turn him back and she pretty much refused. Yeah, she said best I can do is kill him effectively. Yeah. Uh, we would love him I to mean, like I have dead. a hammer out back. Like if you we want don't... to just... No. Here's, here's something that you might be interested in. Do you see uh, what he is wearing? <sighs> some rags, some... <laughs> Holy Judgy. smokes. That a cape of the mount back? The only yeah. one way to find out. Yeah, well, maybe. Ah, oh, boy. See, hmm, I'm very curious about what she might know about this. Uh, for the next, basically, 20 minutes, um, Maeve kind of spent some time getting some reagents together and then, like, muttering some incantations under her breath. And then sort of trying different spells on the ice statue. But at the end of the 20 minutes, she will look up and shake her head and go, if it's a curse or an enchantment or an abjuration of some sort, I, it's not one that I can simply dispel. If you knew what object or what spell or what power did this, um, that would be extremely helpful. But I am... Um, but this might take a 
a, uh, a bigger, more powerful tool than me to be able to fix this. Okay. Um, we know who did it. We don't know how they did it. Is it, it a... Go on. I was going to say, would it be helpful to know that uh, he this happened after we had him steal an object? Maybe? Uh, no? I mean, it's useful context to know, but I... I'm not sure that it changes much. Well, okay. what, we know that Demetria, we know Demetria did it. Okay, so a very, very powerful fey creature. Mm -hmm. We it. are about to visit some of Demetria's siblings. Maybe they might know her particular uh, spell casting the next repertoire? Time, the next time I commune with my patron, I can ask her about it. Okay, okay. Yeah. And then we also, we can ask, you know, one of the siblings if we talk to them. Oh, by the way. Yeah. Your sister uh, froze a guy. Do you know do you what, think, it, what she might have done? Do you think, because it doesn't seem like, is he, he doesn't seem to be melting, does he? No. <laughs> Could we leave him with you? Why? <laughs> we, 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 we have to go. And... <laughs> we have to go save the world, Maeve. Why Remember? is it my no, problem? You, we don't have <laughs> many friends. Because we're your problem. <laughs> Look. Plus, plus uh -huh. we can find you in lots of different places. So if we find out something, maybe we can talk to you in another place, you know. Okay. Here's what I'll say. Mm -hmm. I'll hold him for you. Mm -hmm. For free. For ten days. After that, I will charge you two gold a day for every day that I'm holding him for you. Oh, very reasonable. Seems very reasonable. Better and than public storage. And if someone comes in <laughs> and makes me an offer on this very vivid statue of ice, I will heavily consider just selling it to them. As long as you let us counter offer in that case. You got to do Fine. <laughs> Great. Fine. That's awesome news. Thank yeah. you. Thank yeah. you, Maeve. We Thank you, Maeve. It. Hey, hey, Maeve. Um, how are you with foreign languages? Fairly good. Okay. Um, would you like to have a look at these and tell us if it means anything to you? Doesn't mean much to us. Also, I have these. Like, show the gloves. Okay. Yes. I was like, what are what are yeah, these? Yeah, yeah. Sorry, you didn't just know. Dog that. biscuits. <laughs> um she will uh look at the she'll look at the letters first and kind of go. Huh. Um so I can't read this, Helena. Um, oh. there's very, very few who can. Um, it's a language called Quaileth. Um, it is originally the language of the Illithids. Um, and it is one of the most complicated languages out of all of the sentient races of Keldoran. Um, whoever was doing this was going tremendously out of their way to have a very secret way of communicating. Um, if you, in your travels, run into a mind flayer, or as, or Nilith, as they're also known, approach with extreme caution. They tend to be, as a rule, fairly evil, megalomaniacal, and narcissistic. But if you find yeah. a civil one, they might be able to help you read this. Um, not a lot of other people out there know Quaileth. Um, it's, again, it's quite, quite hard. Okay. Well, thank you. That's a lot more information yeah. than we had. As for these, um, these look like a standard, um, gloves of disguise, Cal. Um, if you want to, I could probably ascertain the command words for them. I'll just take a 20 gold appraising fee for that. 20 gold? I am trying to run a business here, not okay. just a cold statue storage <laughs> facility. 
That's fair. What do, I mean, what do you what do you guys think? We did just get. If you want to find someone else that can appraise these magical items for you and give you the information that you need, by all means, the door is right there. You know what, Maeve? You've really, you know, you've done some good stuff for us. So here's twenty gold. Thank you, thank you. And she will then sort of, you know, like hold the gloves up under sort of a special light that she has, and she'll put on a pair of spectacles and kind of spend about half an hour muttering under her breath and examining them before finally turning back to you, Cal, and telling you what the command word is as she hands them back to you. Goes, that should, uh, that should help you to be able to have them work your will to them. Great. Yeah. What, what was that word? It's a word that we do not need to worry about. It is complicated. It probably is a word like, you know, like, like something that has like a lot of gotcha. Q's and Z's and X's in it. Um, and is not like a word that, you know, it's not like cabbage. And like every time that it just like comes <laughs> up in conversation, the gloves turn on by accident. That's, that's probably wise. Um, and, and Maeve, if I put these on and, and say the word, will I turn into a... Uh, no, you'll Count be able to determine Drago? what you want to look like. Oh, that's cool. I like that. Thank you. Very cool. Yeah. Very cool. All right. Anything else that I can do for you? I think you've done enough for us for now. Excellent. Now, if you don't mind, I was in the middle of something when you all traipsed in, and I have to figure out where I'm going to put this cold statue here. So... Thanks. I will see you the next time that you have some gold that you need to spend. Sounds good. Great. And now, out, out, out. Thank okay. you, Maeve. Okay, thank you, Maeve. Bye. And as the door locks behind you, I think let's take a quick five-minute break. Um, and we will be right back to see where you guys decide to go after this. Okay. So let's hold on for one moment, and then we'll be back in about five minutes.